one month later, children are still dying of dengue. As children die today, NDTV crew witnesses the tragedies. Meanwhile, Abbajan politics dominates. India's vaccination crosses 75 crore milestone. Government says all states should aim for 100%. Centre tells Supreme Court won't file affidavit on Pegasus Rao. Chief Justice says don't bit about the bush. He also says issue of right to privacy also key. From first-time MLA to new Gujarat Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel, Home Minister BJP CMs attend his swearing-in. Tamil Nadu Assembly votes to opt out of NEET exam. NEET now out for Tamil Nadu Medical Colleges. Chief Minister says NEET exam only for the rich and the elite. Hello and welcome. Let's start with news from Uttar Pradesh. Over 100 people have become victims of dengue in UP. In Firozabad alone, over 60 lives have been claimed by it. In the last 48 hours, over 16 people have died here. When the NDTV crew reached Firozabad to report on the story, as many as three kids died right in front of us. Saurav Shukla reports. The wails of this mother gut-wrenching as our NDTV crew watched helplessly. Five-year-old Savanya died in front of her eyes at Firozabad's government hospital. The little girl was brought in critical condition this morning. The doctors said the beds were full. While the desperate family was trying to persuade them, she died on the hospital bed three hours later. Not even basic medical treatment was given to her. As we reported from this hospital, two more children died in a matter of hours. Their families running around for assistance, which came too late. 40-year-old Ramtirth carried his 17-year-old sister on his shoulders within the hospital premises. Trying desperately for admission, unable to get a bed, had no choice but to take her home. Yesterday at 4 o'clock, she was in the morning. Okay. She was not doing it. 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 45-year-old Bhula is taking his 11-year-old daughter home. Her blood samples have been sent for investigation. The hospital has said, till the report comes, she won't be admitted despite the fact she has high fever. She will get a report. 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 She will not 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 get a report. More than 20 to 25 children are lying right in front of the pediatric ward of Firozabad's medical college waiting for their dengue test reports. The principal of Firozabad Medical College, Sangeeta Aneja, says that there are doctors and infrastructure available. People are panicking, hence the hustle outside the hospital. हमारे पास दो पेशेंट्स ब्रॉड डे डाय थे और एक पेशेंट आप बता रहे हैं तो उसका एकदम से हुआ था पेशेंट से एडमिशन हो रहा है किसी को मना नहीं किया जा रहा हमारा क्योंस का स्थिति अगर होगा तो हमारा नॉर्मल पेशेंट बीच में कहेगा हमें ले लो तो हम सिक पेशेंट को नहीं देख पाएंगे थ्री किड्स डाइड राइड इन फ्रंट are waiting from last 24 hours for their dengue report. In Firozabad, with Ashok Mahale, Saurabh Shukla for NDTV. Now the government on Monday said it had nothing to hide, but cited national security to tell the Supreme Court it would not file a detailed affidavit in response to petitions seeking a formal inquiry into the Pegasus spyware, spyware scandal. My colleague Sukiti Divedi reports. Today, the center told Supreme Court that it cannot file an affidavit on the Pegasus phone tapping scandal as it is a matter of national security. This is a U-turn from the government's earlier stance where it kept seeking time to file an affidavit. 
The centre, which avoided a debate in Parliament on the Pegasus controversy by calling it a non-serious issue, was told by the Chief Justice, we don't want to hamper national security either. The issue of concern is whether the phones of individuals were hacked and their right to privacy. The centre said we can't make it a public discourse and can't let terrorists know which software was used. If individual phones were attacked, then that is also serious. The committee can look into it. The Chief Justice of India said, the government says they will form a committee. It is a different matter if we will accept it or not. Everybody wants an inquiry or some sort of investigation. The development comes despite the fact that the government sought time to file an affidavit twice earlier on the 17th of August and 9th of September. A batch of petitions including those filed by the Editors Guild of India and other senior journalists who want a court monitored probe says, we also don't want national security to be compromised. We want the government to answer whether it used Pegasus or not. The spyware is illegal. The CGI today strongly told Solicitor General Tushar Mehta that beating about the bush is not going to solve the issue and pointed out that even if a court-appointed committee submits its report, it will eventually come out in the public domain. To that, the SG replied that the decision on revealing the details then would be entirely up to the Supreme Court. In New Delhi, with camera person Pooja Arya, this is Sukirti Dwedi for NDTV. Now moving to Tamil Nadu, the Tamil Nadu Assembly today passed the Tamil Nadu Admission to Undergraduate Medical Degree Courses Bill which seeks to stop medical admissions on the basis of the National Eligibility Come Entrance Test or NEET for students of the state. Sam Daniel reports that if the bill gets presidential assent, medical admission in the state will happen once again based on the class 12 marks. The Tamil Nadu Assembly has passed a bill to scrap the All India National Eligibility Come Entrance Exam or NEET for admission to medical colleges in the state. This just a day after a lakh and 21,000 took the 2021 exam and an aspiring medical student died by suicide in Salem hours before the highly competitive exam. All political parties except the BGP supported the bill that has huge resonance in the state. Tamil Nadu has opposed NEET, claiming that the exam favours the economically better off students who can avail of coaching. Till 10 years ago, the state granted medical admission on the basis of 12th class marks. And ever since, scrapping NEET has been on the political agenda of every party. If the bill passed by the assembly gets the president's assent, 85% of the 3,550 seats in government medical colleges, 65% seats in private colleges and 50% seats in minority institutions will be filled based on 12th class marks. Critics ask why the Stalin government waited till after the exam to pass the law. The government says it was acting on the basis of a report given by a committee headed by retired Justice A.K. Rajan that said NEET favours the rich and elite. NEET had put poor students from government and Tamil medium schools at disadvantage. NEET doesn't ensure merit or standard. And Tamil Nadu's healthcare system will be badly hit without enough doctors at rural primary health centers if need continues. The Tamil Nadu government feels there is compelling evidence to support its decision to scrap the All India exam as a study on medical admission four years before and after need shows a nearly 10 time dip in state board students from 380 to just around 40. But an exponential rise in CBSE students from a mere 3 to more than 200, seven times high. And most of them had taken private coaching. In Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. On to West Bengal now, the fight for the Bhavanipur seat gets hot.
hotter each day. Mamta Banerjee is yet to personally begin her campaign for the assembly seat that will poll on the 30th of September. But rivals lined up their arsenal on the last day of filing nominations. Top BJP leaders are hand-holding their candidate right through. Even the CPM has joined this battle. Mamta Banerjee at the historic Sola Ana Mosque in Bhavanipur, her first informal outing in the constituency since she filed nomination papers Friday. Her BJP challenger, Priyanka Tibrawal, stopped at a temple before filing papers. Her role as lawyer in the post poll violence case, the boast of Shubhindu Adhikari, winner from Nandigram. भवानीपुर की बेटी बंगाल की बेटी कोर्ट के अंदर लड़ी और जीती यहाँ भी लड़ेगी और जीतेगी तृणमूल मिनिस्टर फिरहाद हकीम लीडिंग ममताज कैंपेन इज नॉट इम्प्रेस्ड प्रियंका टेबरी वाले तो जॉय रहे तो हुई हुई करार कोनो कारण नहीं तार कारण प्रियंका टेबरी वाले सपोर्ट ये टा चिलो नेशनल ह्यूमन राइट्स this 31-year-old lawyer is CPM's man at Bhavanipur. He is making an electoral debut. Uh, maybe we are fighting for the first time, but we are fighting for the first time and the government is fighting for the first time. So this is not new for us. Several independents have also joined battle. But Mamta Banerjee, who has won from Bhavanipur twice already, has set her sights on a hat-trick. With Jiri Shankar, Monadipa Banerjee, NDTV. On to Maharashtra now. After Sakinaka case, another rape case has been reported in Maharashtra. A 15-year-old girl was raped in a railway accommodation. Two police stations didn't file case citing area in which uh, the woman was raped. Uh, the police argue over jurisdiction. Meanwhile, Uddhav Thakre has organized a meet on crimes against women. The Mumbai police, under pressure after the rape and murder of a 34-year-old woman in Sakinaka, says that she knew the accused, a 45-year-old. The police added one more section, SCST Atrocities Act against the accused, for the Friday morning attack, where the woman was brutalized with a rod. The Mumbai police commissioner says, victim and accused knew each other, some financial deal between the two, and when victim asked for her money, there was an argument between the two, post which the sexual crime was committed. Main weapon was recovered. Investigation will be completed within 15 days. Charge sheet will be filed within a month's time. As mentioned in post-mortem report, it is mentioned as evidence of pertinitis due to abdominal injuries and genital injuries with multiple injuries over body. Mumbai's reputation for women's safety has been picked on by the opposition BJP. The ruling Shiv Sena hit back over Hathras and Katua rape cases and said there's a Johnpur pattern that is growing in Maharashtra hinting that people committing such heinous crimes are from UP. CM, Deputy CM and other officials held meetings to discuss women's safety but the important question is that in just one month there were rape cases from Pune, Mumbai, Ullasnagar just putting a question mark on women's safety and Mumbai Maharashtra being safe for women. So the leaders now need to provide solutions and not just assurances. Crimes against women in Mumbai since 2016 have seen a rise dipping in 2020 when the pandemic struck. According to Mumbai police, in 2017, 5,427 cases with detection rate of 80%. In 2018, that went up to 5,978 cases with detection rate of 81%. In 2019, that was 6,438 cases with detection rate of 83%. In 2020, cases were 4,539 with detection rate of 77%. And in 2021, until now, 3,515 cases with detection rate of 
Earlier this month, a six-year-old girl was raped in Pune on 8th of September and on 11th September, another teenager was raped in Ulhas Nagar. In Mumbai with camera person Praveen Jirohit, this is Purva Chitnis for NDTV. There is a story from Jammu and Kashmir. Thousands attended the funeral prayers of a 25-year-old police officer who was killed by terrorists in Srinagar on Sunday. As the body reached uh, Kalmuna village in the Kupwara district of Jammu and Kashmir, thousands of mourners thronged the village to pay last respects to the sub-inspector Arshad Ahmed Mir. <laughs> The moment Sub-Inspector Arshad Ahmad Mir was attacked and killed. A terrorist comes from behind, fires three bullets at point-blank range. This was the scene at the 25-year-old's village on Sunday. Arshad had just started his career in the police after completing a year-long training program. The son of a school teacher, he made it to the Jammu and Kashmir Police Services in 2019. His first posting was at the Khaniar Police Station in Srinagar. The Imam leading the prayers said Arshad was a noble soul snuffed out too soon by the bullets of terrorists. Police said the officer was attacked when he had taken a detained person for a medical checkup in a medical facility in downtown Srinagar was deputed to a hospital for checkup of a accused person and while he was coming back from the hospital he has been shot. The perpetrators of crime involved in this case have been identified and they will be brought to justice. Arshad Ahmad Mir is the 12th police official to have been killed in the last eight months. Over 1,500 personnel of Jammu and Kashmir police have died in action in the last 30 years of militancy. With Nazir Masoodi, Usama Shab for NDTV.